All right. Uh, let's get started. First of all, uh, welcome everyone to Agile Coaching Roundtable. Uh, today is the sixth session and the topic for today is uh, how can you get your first Scrum Master job? Let me share my screen to start with. And this is a question that is uh, being asked to me uh, and Vivek by many and uh, like uh, almost every day. So it's like LinkedIn and other platforms are like a buzz with uh, same question that how do we start uh, as a scrum master uh, in our career? How do we take up that uh, role as a scrum master? So I thought uh, better we would do this uh, session so that everyone uh, can uh, get benefit out of it. And as you all uh, know that I would be uh, recording this session and I would be uploading it in uh, to the YouTube channel as well so that uh, it can benefit many others who wish to know how to uh, bag a role of a scrum master. OK, so let's get started. Uh, I have just put down few uh, steps that you can uh, follow uh, in your uh, scrum master journey, which uh, potentially would help you and this is what helped me and I hope it helped uh, others as well uh, who, who started their journey as a scrum master. So I just consolidated uh, experiences from different different people. So obviously uh, myself and Vivek we uh, got together. We, we try to understand that how do we uh, start? Uh, where did we start from? How did we uh, land to a position where we are in? And I also uh, check with some other colleagues who are working as a scrum masters and agile coaches. And with that, I have kind of curated these steps uh, uh, which could help us uh, uh, take our journey uh, in, uh, to scrum master role. First of all, the first and foremost thing and the important thing for everyone, not just a uh, the uh, newbies as a scrum master, but this is for everyone, all the seasoned scrum masters as well. It is very important for us to follow the scrum guide. So the first step is download the scrum guide and do a thorough study of it. So I cannot re reiterate the importance of this first step. It is very important for us to know the scrum guide and understand what a scrum guide talks about. Uh, to start his journey uh, as a scrum master, it is very important for us to know the scrum guide properly in and out. So if you guys remember, uh, I had conducted very first session on um, the do's and don'ts of uh, or should have or must have of the scrum guide, wherein I have already uh, taught you guys how to read the scrum guide, which all are the uh, rules of the game which should be followed and which must be followed. And uh, with that knowledge, at least I would uh, recommend everyone to download this scrum guide, do a study of it, understand it. What does the scrum guide talk about uh, uh, in terms of scrum framework? Uh, what are all the components? What are the roles and responsibilities? It talks about all the roles and responsibilities, uh, events, artifacts, etc. And once you understand what Scrum Guide talks about is when you will understand what actually the roles and responsibilities of Scrum Masters are. So second would be understand the roles and responsibilities of Scrum Master as per the Scrum Guide. It This is most uh, misconstrued concept in today's day and age. Why I'm saying this is because I have worked as a scrum master and I'm working as an agile coach. I have seen organization who are just messing up with the roles of uh, uh, roles and responsibilities of scrum master. They their problem statement is one. They expect something else. They know something else uh, about scrum master and they they want something else. So there is no uh, link to all these dots. So that is a reason why I say that this is this concept is misconstrued a lot in today's day and age uh, in the service industry. For that matter, even in the product industry as well. So it is very important, at least for us as a scrum masters, to know what 
what the roles and responsibilities of a scrum master are. Next is go for correct scrum master certificate. Once you understand what the, uh, the roles and responsibilities are, next step for you would be opting for your scrum master certification. Now you may have come and ask the, which certification should I go for? So there are two certifications, uh, uh, at least for Scrum Master, I must say, that are available. One is CSM, that is Certified Scrum Master. Second is uh, PSM, that is Professional Scrum Master. Both this, both these certifications are valid, and it is uh, both of them are recognized internationally or globally. So whichever certification you go for would add value to your uh, uh, knowledge bank. Uh, but having said that, CSM is the one which is most popular and widely used. When I say CSM is popular, I do not uh, say that PSM is not important. In fact, PSM gives you in-depth knowledge of uh, Scrum Master certification uh, or Scrum Master or Scrum framework. Whereas as compared to PSM, CSM is bit at a superficial level. Is what I can say, but both the certifications are equally important, equally valid and equally recognized. So whichever comes handy or whichever based on the tra trainer's availability or whichever you wish to uh, go ahead with, you can go for that certification. And one point I would like to add on the certification is that for CSM, there is a validity. So every two years you will have to renew your certification by paying certain amount and by collecting uh, a PDU, whereas PSM is expiring. Once you are PSM certified, it is uh, for your lifelong validation. It is valid uh, till your, uh, uh, I mean, till the end. So it's not that like CSM or PSM has got some limitations or expiry, but CSM uh, does have that uh, limitation and expiry, wherein every two years you will have to renew that certification. So whenever you opt for a certification, keep all these things in mind and go for a right uh, certification. Next is reflect on your current roles and responsibilities. Yes, when I say re re reflect on your current roles and responsibilities, this is very important point. Now you may say that this is all fine. This is all study material and understanding, reading, certification is all fine. The step, the, uh, till step number three, is is where you will uh, find it as a gateway entry way to the scrum master but you know that in today's day and age no one entertains a fresher as a scrum master when i say fresher i don't mean fresher as an experience in the it industry but experience as a scrum master you may ask me that when they expect a experienced scrum master in uh, uh, today's uh, world how can we land up uh, the uh, role uh, or a job that is a very valid question so what if you are at least have around seven years of six and a half to seven years of total experience only then think about this uh, role and uh, role of a scrum master it, there is no stopping, nowhere written that less than five years or less than six years cannot apply for it or cannot do a role of a scrum master. Why I'm saying is up to seven years, still you will be working as an individual contributor. But beyond seven years is when you will work in the capacity of a lead or a manager or a leader, right? So when you work in the capacity of a leader or a lead, is when you understand the depth and width of the uh, entire game. Unless and until uh, or till you work as a uh, lead, you will not understand what roles and responsibilities are uh, of a lead or a manager. How do you take care of your entire team? Uh, in your ind individual contribution, you will just think about your own roles and responsibilities. You will just think about how am I going to ace my game? You will not think about others in uh, other team members of your team. That level of maturity is required for the role of a scrum master. So that is the only reason why I'm saying that you should at least have 
six and a half to seven years of an experience to be able to take up this role. I am not questioning anyone's capability that less than six years of experience cannot take up this role. But I am saying is that you will do more justice if you have more than this much years of experience. And if at all that is one. And second thing is when I say reflect on your role, uh, current roles and responsibilities, I assume that you have worked uh, in an agile project uh, in, in your past. Now, most of us are working in an agile projects. So if you're working in an agile pro project and if you're working in the capacity of a lead, it could be anything developer, uh, developer lead, solution architect or uh, test lead or BA or whatever, or maybe even a project lead for that matter. And if you want to uh, do a role of a scrum master or uh, want to apply for a job of a scrum master, what I will do, I, I will suggest is just reflect upon your current roles and responsibility. If you're working in the capacity of a lead in an agile project, I am sure you would be touch basing on the roles and responsibility of a scrum master somewhere. Not all, maybe few, but definitely you would be touch basing few roles and responsibilities of scrum master. That is the reason why I'm saying just reflect of, upon your current, uh, current roles and responsibility. When I say roles and responsibilities, not uh, what uh, the ideal roles and responsibility of your uh, uh, role should be, but what you're currently actually taking up and roles and responsibilities you're taking up that contribute for your project. So that is the reason why I'm saying just reflect upon your current roles and responsibilities, write, write them all. I know uh, it is very difficult to just put finger to some roles and responsibilities and say, no, I have worked upon this and worked upon that, but just write it down and then map your current roles and responsibility to that of a scrum master. Just see where can you align the roles and responsibilities with your scrum master's uh, roles and responsibility. This will help you to give some clarity of what roles and responsibilities of a scrum master are and what you need to do in which direction you need to lead. Second is after this volunteer scrum masters roles and responsibilities within your project or organization. This works like anything. This works wonder. This I have done in my past wherein after I did my certification, after I reflected upon my role, current roles and responsibilities, after I went through the scrum guard and all of that, I actually started looking up for opportunity within the organization. I just started reaching out people, reaching out to uh, staffing guys or reaching out to managers wherein uh, uh, I get to know whether there is a role, uh, whether there is an opportunity for a scrum master. And if yes, then I, I used to apply for those opportunities. And many would tell me that no one gives it a switch off a role so easily. No one will give that opportunity. Why will they give the opportunity? And you are absolutely right. No one within your organization would entertain you uh, with the internal switch of a profile. I have faced the same uh, problem as well. So what you can do is, if not the entire responsibility uh, of handling an entire project, you can just volunteer yourself to act as a scrum master. And even if you don't get that opportunity also to get a, uh, to volunteer yourself, what I would suggest is at least shadow your existing uh, scrum master. So if just observe your current uh, scrum master who is playing a role of a scrum master in your project, just observe that person, what he or she is doing, how he or she is conducting uh, the events or uh, how they are facilitating and uh, how they are approaching uh, to any problem. What is the solution that they are giving? Just think uh, and just observe. And whenever uh, opportunity, whenever you get an opportunity to shadow or wherever you get that opportunity, for example, that person might go on a leave. You go and take that opportunity and tell them that I would like to uh, fill in, uh, fill, fill up for you in your absence. And I did that. So I used to just observe my scrum master. I used to just see how he is playing that role. What is he thinking? I used to ask a lot of questions. Whenever uh, I used to get that opportunity, I used to just sit him down and ask him, why did you do this? What was the rationale behind uh, you taking up this step? 
or thinking this way what did you achieve by doing that so many questions i used to ask my uh, scrum master and whenever he used to uh, go on a leave i used to tell uh, tell him please give me that opportunity let me take up that role i would like to volunteer i would like to experience how uh, i would feel by feeling in a uh, in your shoes so that is the uh, that uh, that's the way how i used to kind of seek opportunities second way is like try to connect uh, within your organization there would be some coe agile center of excellence or agile capability try to get yourself um, uh, kind of tag to that uh, coe or try to just involve yourself to that coe contribute in whichever way you can or uh, whether you would want to just help them do some estimations or whether you want to do help them do some rfp or conduct some trainings or maybe uh, working or volunteering as a scrum master in whichever capacity you could uh, think of go and do that volunteer uh, service uh, offer your service to your organization project coe or whatever this is the only way uh, you will get and learn that experience and soak in all the experience uh, of the roles and responsibilities of a scrum master and once you are uh, done with a volunteering is when the actual struggle starts now you have exhausted all your options within your organization if you get and it is very important for you to show that passion only then people will trust you that you would be able to do that role and that's how your uh, organization would at least think of giving you that option or take uh, of taking up that role and if you get that role within the uh, organization then nothing like it if you still do not get that opportunity within your organization there is no other option but to look outside so for that what you can do is first of all just go to your linkedin profile because lot of action happens over linkedin and that is the professional website where all the recruiters rely upon come together and check your profile to ref, uh, to just see where you stand so forget nokri forget monster i'm not saying that do not follow them or do not apply over there but what i'm saying is your linkedin profile plays a lot of uh, importance and it plays a big role in uh, for, for you to get that job so what you'll do what you will do is give an opportunity to the, whether you will give yourself a chance to play a role of a scrum master if no then you know what you need to do right so just look into your uh, linkedin profile you know what roles and responsibilities are uh, required for a scrum master you know what scrum guide talks about you already know what roles and responsibilities that you have uh, undertaken in your current uh, uh, project and you also know how are you uh, map that current roles and responsibility to the roles and responsibilities of a scrum master all you have to do is just weave a story around it i'm not saying that you fake a story i'm saying weave a story so when i say weave a story just connect all the dots and put up that on a linkedin profile your linkedin profile should be so strong that looking at it anyone should understand this person is passionate about scrum and this person has a capability of taking a role of a scrum master and that is the only way you can sell your skills of a scrum master and trust me linkedin helps a lot in building your network getting you a job getting you reach to a right people and like minded people and off lately i am doing that uh, like since 2 2 to 2 to 1/2 years now and it has taken me places today what reach i have got even today if i am able to connect with you guys is half of the population that i'm connecting uh, to is through linkedin and half are obviously my uh, colleagues and friends whom i have worked with but linkedin is one such place which will take you places in your agile journey so 
please concentrate on linkedin profile and if you don't have one please create your account it's a, it's high time for you to be on linkedin next is once you build your profile be part of agile community and engage yourself to enhance self learning now which agile community so this is one right agile coaching round table is one such community that we have built together to grow and learn together this was the only aim for me to start up this agile coaching round table it i mean we can do one session on how we uh, ended up having this agile coaching round table say, uh, uh, round table uh, community but trust me when i and vivek were starting this this was the only aim i did not even think about we'll have to spend some money from our pocket we'll have to do some marketing this that nothing else we thought about it one fine day one fine afternoon and from next day on we started this just so that everyone can get together can learn together that is the only aim for us to start this uh, agile coaching round table so there are many communities uh, on linkedin on meetups and there are many such pages wherein there are uh, agile network india is one such uh, platform wherein you can uh, uh, attend sessions events and all of that so there are many such uh, agile communities so and follow right people so when you go on linkedin you start getting feeds uh, wherein all the uh, great personalities on the linkedin uh, they post they talk they share and all of that try to engage yourself in those uh, posts and uh, uh, maybe <coughs> videos what will happen is when you start engaging uh, in the form of likes or comments is when you enhance your knowledge you you just validate your knowledge it's not that to become famous or you just want others to get notice uh, other to notice you and all of that you have to engage because you want to learn so that once you will go wrong twice you will go wrong but from the part onwards you will learn what is right this is very important and this is not just for the beginners as a scrum master this is a everyone in this journey including me vivek everyone even today i i you would see me more active on linkedin than in any other social media. that's how i learn it is very important for us to become a lifelong learner and only through such engagements is how you learn and grow next is go through the job description and apply for jobs so this is self explanatory just Uh, search for the jobs go through the job descriptions and apply for the jobs and next is to start with working in a project or an organization where they are looking for agile project manager or scrum master role where you can understand the difference between both the roles and know do's and don'ts of the game which means nowadays as i as i mentioned scrum master is the most misconstrued role or a, or a job wherein people expect scrum master to be a agile project manager who would take care of your deliverables who would uh, come with uh, extensive agile knowledge who, who would also take care of people management and what not so i would still suggest that you should start working in such environment so that you understand what is right and what is wrong first of all you should do whatever you know and then you should know what, uh, what right you should be doing and what wrong you should be ignoring so only when you do everything is when you understand when uh, you can filter out what is right and what is wrong and listen until you do that dirty job you would not understand what is right and what is wrong so it's okay even if you start as an agile project manager and eventually become a clean and pure scrum master that is absolutely fine even i have learned that way and no one will give you uh, or it is very difficult for you to get that pure scrum master role and lucky are those who get that role but you will have such mixed bag 
of an agile project manager role or maybe agile leader agile lead or whatever they want to call take up that role do gain some experience soak in all the experience absorb and then you filter out okay these these are the roles and responsibility that do not align with this scrum master roles and these are some project manager roles that is when you can filter out and that is when you get that idea okay i have to concentrate only on this path and these are all the anti patterns and once you get that level of experience is when you can think of becoming a pure scrum master in terms of uh, scrum guide as per what scrum guide suggests so whatever opportunity you get be it a agile project manager or a scrum master at least take up that role get some experience and then you can start your uh, journey as a scrum master so these are all the points that at least i think of that will help you in your uh, agile journey and uh, if at all you have any other points or anything that you feel or you uh, i have missed on then you can please add uh, to me and uh, on this note i would uh, ask vivek to just um, continue if you have any other points to uh, put in over here uh, thanks ramya so i guess you no know, you, you... uh what are the basic uh, things that required to kick start you know any i mean journey on the scrum master path uh, just to you know uh, uh, you know put more information or to be more informative it's like uh, you know when 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 we start as a scrum master uh, you know especially for me always i try to focus on you know uh, the the uh, the values and the principles of agile that is one thing that uh, you know i each one of us need to be aware about or you know it's like we we need to every time you know uh, relate to it you know in our day to day activities how we are conducting is like uh, we need to be sure of those values and those 12 principles that is one thing and second thing is like you know being sure about what what the scrum guide always talks about you know try to relate to you know how the scrum guide has put across the scrum that is one thing see understanding the scrum framework is one thing but actually going ahead and implementing it or you know trying to relate to it is uh, altogether a different challenge or altogether a different uh, process so once you know as a uh, uh, scrum master we start relating to it maybe you know that is where you know half uh, or maybe you know 50% of your uh, problem or the challenge that you face uh, getting into that role Uh, will be uh, you know uh, uh, figured out i mean that is where it will help you once you understand those basics or understand what the scrum guide really mentions about or what it really relates to and that is where you can you know initiate those communications or initiate those discussions wherever you get that opportunity and as ramya already you know she rightly mentioned that if if you are you know uh, trying to get into a role of a scrum master and you you're trying to understand how do i kick start off or how do i you know uh, get started the the best thing is you know just just refer to the scrum guide uh, the certification all those things will you know that those are second step maybe you know people will validate based on those certification or you know they might screen you based on those certifications but to ensure that you know you land up a good opportunity and once you land up how are you going to go ahead and crack that opportunity you know you need to be aware about the scrum guide and the ins and out of the scrum guide uh, i mean uh, relate to it uh, it's not that we just mug up those uh, concepts but relate to it how do you you know uh, explain people into getting into different situation how do you align those situations to the how the scrum guide has men mentioned it and also aligning with your agile uh, values and principle this will always help each one of us and to be very frank you know uh, i and ramya you know every time we keep on revisiting the agile values and principles and also scrum guide because it's very much important for us 
to be uh, you know aware about where we are lacking or where we are going wrong and uh, it has helped us in our day to day activities it's not that you know we just uh, remember it for once and then that's done and dusted it. it's not that done. like like uh, even in our daily projects when we get some you know uh, some kind of uh, challenges uh, we we see to you know how we align those challenges to those uh, values and principles and that is how we come out of it so uh, just to put across i wanted to put this points and uh, for all the other things i mean uh, uh, i have already covered everything and then i maybe if if anyone has questions around how to you know go ahead or uh, take up you know if they have more of the questions we are open to answer those thank you vivek uh, can i ask a question uh, yeah sure i shall yeah i'm sorry there is some tech technical glitch i guess i'm not able to raise my hand so um vivek uh, yeah uh, vivek firstly i'm really really glad that um, we are doing this because last time when we were having this question and answer session i really wanted to ask uh, ramya to have this for us but again i got disconnected quite early uh, mm -hmm. so but i'm really glad because i i have faced a few uh, concerns with respect to trying to find an opportunity uh, for a scrum master okay so i have been working for past few years 5 uh, to 6 years now uh, in uh, client servicing and project management okay and i have been working mostly in marketing industry and biotech companies my experience is mostly in these two uh, industries so once i completed my certification and uh, i started giving interviews uh, there are a couple of interviews initially where you know i didn't do uh, quite well okay there were questions that i could not answer then i went back i studied i learned i checked with other people who were into scrum tried to understand few things from them then i gave more interviews a couple more uh and uh, i did well in uh, in a couple of them but what i faced issues was ki many people when they ask you they just stop you uh, asking what is your relevant experience and when i say i don't have relevant experience they don't even give me an opportunity for an interview and a couple of interview that go well uh ultimately they come back and say can no i mean as an hr i really like you know it it was good but my manager feels okay because you don't have an exposure into this industry or something um and in the role uh, you don't have that technical uh, skills uh, we're not really sure maybe you can try for this role so you know i've been uh, uh, you know little I uh, will, you know, I don't know how to go forward uh, with this uh, uh, now, because when I say a uh, five to six experience, they assume that as a scrum master I have. But when I say that I don't have as a scrum master, uh, they kind of, uh, you know, I lose that opportunity there without an interview most of the time. So. Okay. so uh, aisha thanks for that question and it is a valid one uh, many of us are facing the same issues so what uh, i think you are already certified and uh, you mentioned that you are working uh, in a marketing environment right and you uh, are also giving a few interviews as well so what i would uh, suggest you in this scenario is that first of all as i mentioned just reflect if you are working uh, in the position of a lead or a manager Uh, in an agile uh, projects then just reflect upon the roles and responsibilities and map those roles and responsibilities as uh, to that of a scrum master and that you can show it as an experience for example if you are working in an agile project for say last one one year and if you are working in any capacity uh, of a lead a developer or a test lead or whatever it could be it could be a dba analyst uh, or whatever capacity that you are working on uh, in an agile project as i have mentioned i'm sure that you would have uh, touch based few of the roles and responsibility of a scrum master and when you do that what you can do is you just put gather all of those and reframe uh, to suit it to uh, your scrum master i'm not saying that again there is a difference between mapping and faking right so i'm not saying that you should mm. fake that experience 
just map the roles, the roles and responsibility and show it as uh, okay i'm working in an agile project you can just weave a story only that story is missing uh -huh. is what i feel just a weave, a, weave a story tell that okay i'm working uh, in agile projects since so many years and these are the roles and responsibilities that that i have taken as a, a scrum master or touch based upon the roles and responsibilities of a scrum master that is one second thing i would like to mention is uh the interview the part of hr not giving you that opportunity all i would say is just sound passionate in your interviews and just tell them tell hr that i would i would get that validated uh with the uh, uh, interviewer just give me that opportunity to just line me up for the interview at least i will get that uh, clarity with the interviewer on the roles and responsibility you just help me line up the interview if you say this i'm sure no hr will tell you no because i have done that i have told people that please line me up uh, for the uh, interview i would uh, explain my roles and responsibility uh, in a better way uh, to the interviewer then you will be open uh, to interviews and second thing is trust this the interviewers will always try to find answers or solutions to their problems that they are currently facing in their current project so all they want is they nowadays people don't even care whether so first thing is as you rightly mentioned certification they'll check okay sis mm. check second mm. is they will throw questions that they are facing currently the problems that they are facing in their uh, current projects and if you are able and it is very subjective the interview of a scrum master and i really uh, feel uh, whoever um, mucks up the uh, scrum master interview questions or whoever gives a cheat sheet of uh, interview questions right i really pity them because there is no guarantee that these questions would be asked by everyone and if someone asks you uh, inter even interviewer just asks you uh, from that uh, cheat sheet then i would claim that that person doesn't know anything about scrum or agile because it is very subjective interviewer the true interviewer will ask you uh, to uh, just check how situational you can be and how you can resolve the problem uh, situationally he will only ask you he or she will ask you questions uh that the problems that they are facing and the answer they are seeking if you are able to convince uh, to uh, what they are uh, just searching for in an agile way so that is what uh, and how you are going to convince that through your through agile values and principles that vivek spoke about just try to reflect or just try to relate that problem and uh, to the agile values and principles and just try to uh, reply to that interviewer if you and that doesn't come very easily it comes with practice you may i after just hearing to this i cannot guarantee that from tomorrow onwards you are going to clear all the rounds no you, this comes with practice if you practice this thing of uh, mapping your problems to your agile values and principles and seeking solutions from there is when you will be in a right direction and that is when you would be able to crack your interview okay yeah ramya uh, i completely agree with you and i have noted all that you have shared with me and i'll try to follow but yeah i do agree that the more interviews i give the more i get to know and a lot of a uh, good uh, good interviewers that actually uh, tell you uh, uh, more about the answers that you are giving wherever you are lacking any perception uh, they do clarify and that also helps yes yes and you have all the right to check with the interviewer where did you go wrong so take that opportunity whenever they ask you any questions from your end that is your opportunity to ask questions to check where you went wrong or check for the feedback on some answers or answers to some questions they will never say no yeah yes okay i think rishi Hi. has raised hand Thank yes, you, Ramya. Thank you, Aisha. Yeah, hi, ma'am. Uh, uh, ma'am, my question is uh, like, while uh, this scrum master, like, uh, 
uh, jobs are they domain specific like uh, someone who is uh, do they ask are you from like banking background or are you from insurance background then only we will take your interview or or we can be like a fit into any uh, domain like my domain is insurance domain uh, experience of having around 13 years so uh, so my target should be only scrum master roles for insurance domain or it the domain can be changed or uh, it can be banking or it can be any any domain like uh, it requires like it like it requires only a uh, domain specific experience or uh, like any experience it's like this okay. roles and so yeah so i was just coming to that uh, while answering aisha but good that you asked questions so that everyone uh, gets that perspective as well first of all scrum master role is technology agnostic domain agnostic and uh, maybe uh, technical skill set agnostic that is uh, i mean that is something everyone should understand the place where they ask you uh, that you should be technical enough or you should uh, understand the domain you should understand the technology that means they do not understand the roles and responsibilities of scrum master you can apply for anything and anything and not only in uh, some uh, it non it also wherever there is an opportunity where they apply for scrum you can go and apply for that also so there is nothing that uh, that is stopping you from uh, being a scrum master in one particular domain so if you ask my experience i have worked in like healthcare domain i have worked in manufacturing i have worked in e commerce i have worked in hr so whenever someone asks me that uh, Uh, why should i hire you you don't have the domain experience right and uh, uh, to add to i also worked on the latest technology as latest as iot and currently i'm working uh, in an analytical uh, environment analytical uh, domain so you can understand that scrum master role can fit into any technology any domain so if you are applying for the role of a ba or a product owner yes we understand that domain knowledge is very important but not for a scrum master you are going there with your agile expertise you are going there with your scrum expertise and not for any technology uh, related aspect and many people uh, tell you that to be a scrum master is no technical skills for all uh, world not technical in terms of technology so you are uh, uh, i mean you should not be stopping yourself or restricting yourself for any particular domain or any particular technology for applying for a role of a scrum master you are open to apply for any domain and any technology so all you have to answer them is that can be learned i mean give me just 3 months of time while i spend in that environment i would be able to understand their language is what you should answer them Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, thanks, Rishi. Uh, I think Srinivas uh, has a question. Hey, hi, Rama. Rama, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I'm able to hear you. Right. Yeah, Rama. So, uh, Rama, so what is the probability for a non-technical person to get a scrum master job? So, this uh, like is non-technical in sense, non-development uh, background. Okay, because I'm, I'm the one. Uh, who is working for G General Electric Supplies Company from last 14 years? I played mm. multiple roles. Like as uh, everything is into QA, uh, in the QA space, and I don't have any uh, development uh, experience. But now I'm aspiring, so uh, I'm looking for transforming my job to Scrum Master role. So in case uh, if, if I can correlate, I can reflect all my current uh, roles responsibilities to Scrum Master, and I can tell that I do have some experience on this. But do you think that? uh whether uh, after getting job i can do justice for that role or not absolutely even i am from uh, i was from qa background even i don't uh, i am not technical i am not from uh, development background so as i mentioned you need to have certain experience to be able to uh, play a role of a lead or a manager or in whichever stream or whichever technology that you are working on just to understand or get that maturity to handle teams responsibility 
or shoulder the team's responsibility. That's it. And some knowledge of agile, wherein uh, you would understand the uh, environment of agile. After that, you are free to take up a uh, role of a scrum master, be it a developer, tester, anything. I myself worked uh, till uh, as an agile uh, QA manager. After that, I switched to Scrum Master. Same is the case with Vivek as well. Even he has worked as a QA lead and then he switched into uh, Scrum Master. So, uh, I mean, I am sure many of uh, people uh, in this group itself who have joined today are from QA background and they are aspiring and they are working as a Scrum Masters as well. So, uh, it's not that you should be technical enough. Uh, you can very well apply for a role of a Scrum Master. Yeah, Ramya. So, but how can we control the strong personalities in the Scrum team? See, the people will be having 15, 20 years of uh, uh, the technical experience, right? So, can we manage those people as well? Like, uh, if we. Yes. Uh, okay. We would okay. like to uh, take this uh, question. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, uh, sure. I, I completely understand or relate to what you know your concern is. I mean, uh, especially getting into the Scrum Master opportunity and then trying to manage those. Uh, I would rather say, you know, uh, people coming with uh, deep experience or deep knowledge in terms of technology or domain. You know, uh, how how as a Scrum Master we can you know ensure that we we are managing or we are you know managing those egos i would rather say in that way to be very blunt about it it's see you know when you get into a scrum master role it's obviously you have you know one of the important aspect or one of the important thing that you need to you know uh, uh, ensure is you know how you uh, are you know managing the conflicts within the team when i say conflicts it's like uh, it also uh, comes with an it's like how are you going to take the egos of individuals and how are you ensuring that you know the, the environment within the team is always healthy environment and that is you know the skill of a scrum master as an individual of as in a personality will come out when you you know get into those situation which are more of a troubling when it's more of a, a personality management and that is where the scrum master responsibility also is very important how he handles it uh, see uh, having different uh, people with different set of experience, uh, say 20 years or 25 years, we, we have seen in, uh, within the industry, it's it's throughout. Uh, how how you can ensure that, you know, those people align uh, uh, in, in a different way of working, rather I would say it's like different way of working altogether in an agile setup. So it's like they find it very difficult when they come from a different background, they have their own set of working they have their own set of mindset they have their own set of you know uh, uh, experience altogether you know they have been uh, uh, taking up that you know single ownership of working and now the ownership is a distributed ownership so that is where the major difference is altogether when we work in an agile setup and that is where we need to uh, manage those those you know those ripples in the team where we where we see that you know a person with 20 years of experience or a person with two years of experience the gap how do how are we bridging those gaps how are we you know ensuring that a two years per, experienced person is not getting mated with a you know person having 20 years of experience and that is where as a scrum master we need to you know build up that environment within the team and uh, I, I mean, this is how, you know, uh, as a Scrum Master, we, we need to uh, ensure that, you know, uh, we uh, have that environment, uh, working environment, basically. All right. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Uh, hi, Vivek. Uh, can I go ahead? Yes. Uh, is someone? Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not able to raise my hand. <laughs> I have to intervene. Yeah. It's okay. It's yeah, okay. And thank you. So uh, what I was trying to do was recently, you know, um, from a few months, I, I started looking for projects or looking for companies who are at least hire people at an associate level or, you know, work on certain projects. Unfortunately, I was able to find it. I don't know whether, you know, I searched it in the wrong places or I searched it in the wrong way, but uh, I was I was eager and desperate to get some experience, you know, first. I did take up a few uh, uh, Coursera uh, projects, uh, you know, where I work on a guided projects to understand how you use certain platforms that the master uses. 
you know making the story uh, understanding jira and that uh so, i mean i mean but people i i couldn't see more opportunities that you know i can go and explore as an associate or an intern or a trainee uh do we don't have any such positions or any such avenues open at all for this role okay Hello. so so i should to summarize what for the uh, you know uh, the question that you put across yeah. is like uh, you are trying to f- uh, find out an opportunity with your existing uh, environment altogether right that was that was your concern or uh, i i got it wrong uh not only in my existing see my existing profile uh, existing company that i'm working for is more of a marketing and advertising domain okay so the work culture is very different uh i couldn't find any projects uh, based on you know where i could actively participate as a scrum master so i started looking elsewhere maybe in different domains and industries as well but couldn't come across any suitable ones and when i even asked my interviewers uh if they have any positions open in their companies i would love to even work as an intern there for a few months uh but mm-hmm. but nothing nothing was available like they told me kidney asthma i i, 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 I got it yeah yeah oh. i i absolutely got it so you know uh, aisha one of the uh, different thing that you know maybe you can uh, try to do is like there are few i mean there are a lot of uh, freelancing op- opportunity available you know uh, within the uh, uh, industry uh, the only thing that you need to is like you you have to put some effort in in a way that you get those freelancing opportunities uh, and uh, we fr- very frank you know linkedin has you know provides that opportunity you will find people putting across those opportunities saying that you know we need people uh, as a freelancer we need uh, people as on a contractual basis we need people you know who are ready to spend 2 3 hours on a daily uh, basis or on a week uh, duration so you need to you know look for those opportunities and uh, mm-hmm. i guess you know uh, uh, maybe you might have been trying it from uh, uh, you know uh, from a good amount of time uh, but it's just mm-hmm. you know uh, grabbing one opportunity which you, you know uh, maybe you will get it uh, it's just you need to look keep looking for opportunities and the other thing you know where you see that The, there is a gap between your knowledge or you know uh, what the industry is expecting in terms of an it knowledge i would say uh, see to j- just i mean uh, to kick start or you no know, just to uh, see that you know at least someone gives me that opportunity you would definitely need some basic level of you know and uh, and a development knowledge i won't say that you need to have an uh, you know uh, an experience be, uh, being a developer or being an uh, qa uh, in person you just need to understand some technical you know uh, terms Uh, that that we relate to in an uh, IT uh, system and uh, IT application or the way the IT world uh, operates. So you know, as an individual, we need to understand to what you know uh, the entire IT setup is and how the builds happen, how all those things happen, how the you know uh, uh, usually the development cycles you know gets into place. So as as an individual, uh, when we try to get into a Scrum Master role, we also need to have those basic knowledge. Those are those are not technical knowledge, but those are you know. how the it system all together operates so those kind of knowledge we also need to have in hand plus with the scrum master role and then that is what the industry basically looks into uh, i know you know uh, people usually look for candidates who are well versed with everything uh, but then uh, as a scrum master it's not really required to have a you know good technical knowledge uh, that is one thing but having a basic knowledge will definitely help you you know uh, uh, give you that uh, extra advantage or you know uh, the uh, the interview who is taking an interview will you know it will give him that confidence okay you know the, the uh, she she can pull out this uh, uh, job even if he, she has no experience working as a scrum master because she has understanding of how the it system operates how the you know industry operates and plus uh, uh, this will this will definitely uh, uh, you know help her out or this will be good if even she has that knowledge around uh, those things let me you wanted to add something yes vivek uh so aisha so whatever vivek has mentioned is absolutely correct so first of all uh, to get into that it uh, and working as a scrum master you just need to understand software development life cycle how does software development life cycle works and then you can do that uh, justice to that rule 
and trust me i have uh, had, i know that raman is raising hand since longest time i'll just cut uh, i mean uh, put this summarize this and then maybe raman i'll come to you yeah so what i was saying is uh, you won't trust me i have given an opportunity for someone uh, uh, from the civil architect background no knowledge of uh, no experience of it no experience of scrum master but i gave that person an opportunity all i asked was on the scrum knowledge i asked that questions uh, and the person was able to answer those uh, questions not just bragging about it if you just go to my so given that opportunity when i see in that potential passion and uh, that uh, enthusiasm in that person and obviously uh, uh, the person had a very good uh, scrum knowledge so i thought that i should give that person a job because at some point of time even i was struggling to get that job as scrum master and i should help others and obviously she ha she had a very good knowledge uh, uh, of, uh, on the scrum framework and she understands the roles and responsibility okay so, uh, हेलो हेलो audible Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your voice is breaking. But your voice is like. It does break. Yeah, it does break at the end. Okay, am I audible now? Yeah. Okay. So what I was saying, uh, Aisha, is that so. and then i have shared that feedback uh, to a person who was conducting uh, the l2 round so that person was my uh, uh, manager so i gave that feedback that so and so person is like uh, uh, doesn't have uh, it experience and all of that but then she has got very good knowledge uh, on uh, scrum master roles and responsibility scrum framework and all of that so uh, next level interview was uh, when the uh, manager told uh that to just brush up on how it industry works so obviously she didn't have any experience or any knowledge of what uh, variable is or maybe what is software development life cycle what is uh, testing life, life cycle so she, uh, mm -hmm. what uh, my manager gave her the feedback you just learn all of this and meet me again and once she did that i don't know i uh, it's it was after 10 or 15 days when she just understood or she did some her uh, level of homework is when she returned and today that uh, girl is working as a scrum master full time scrum master in a safe environment not even in a scrum she is working as a safe scrum master so and she is uh, i mean definitely i the way she gave the interview i am very sure now i am not that part of the uh, i am not that uh, uh, in that organization anymore but i am very sure that she is doing a wonderful job so it's not about how uh, well uh, you perform it's like you just need to have Uh, an idea of an how the software development life cycle works and as uh, you also asked about that opportunities right so uh, as vivek mm. mentioned there are many uh, freelancer uh, jobs that are that are available not only on linkedin there is something called as uh, simply hire as well and okay. where you can uh, simply hired there you will you can have these scrum master jobs and uh, also uh, there are couple more upwork as well yeah upwork is also a website wherein you will get a freelancer uh, job 
so just try to apply uh, to those jobs to just uh, get that experience and also uh, apart from uh, this maybe if you are uh, interested you can attend few sessions or you can also conduct few sessions uh, as well uh, as a scrum master even that could uh, help you and there are some websites which will help you simulate uh, the uh, sprint for you as a scrum master so even uh, you can find that uh, websites as well wherein you can get that uh, 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 sprint simulations uh, wherein you will okay. actually get that feel of uh, working in a, a scrum framework that way you can uh, get that uh, some level of confidence uh, as a scrum master uh that that's wonderful uh, ramya thank you thank you for those suggestions uh so uh, uh, ramya i had one more questions if i may ask if it's not too much uh, uh, would you mind uh, uh, giving chance to raman and maybe then come yeah back. yeah please 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 yeah. sure sure yes yeah yes raman thank you aisha for that hi ka so my question is like uh, what is the value of a tool like jira or devops play in a role of a scrum master because like i have attended couple of interviews wherein i have tried all the scrum uh, interviews and all and lately i was uh, rejected or kept on hold by not knowing the tools how to work on these tools so uh, like i've recently gone through the scrum master certification thing and i've asked the same question to the trainer and the trainer said tool is just an enabler okay as a scrum master you should concentrate on the ceremonies and values of the scrum uh, not on the tools but uh, like as i told you i got rejected couple of times for the same reason so how do i defend these kind of situations in interviews yes uh, thank you raman for that question and absolutely the trainer uh, has uh, to, uh, told you a very right thing that tools are just the enablers so doing tools and processes uh, doesn't mean that you are doing your uh, scrum uh, or doing your agile uh, work right those are just this part of this entire big agile world having said that tool is important for us to drive uh, the things from uh, project perspective right and having said that learning tool is not a problem if just imagine you working uh, as, as whatever capacity that you are working on you just passed out graduated you just had this certification saying that you are certified uh, uh, graduate right you are graduated now you go and apply for a jobs and you get a job and working there they will expect you n number of things that you should know this you should know that and all of that but will that stop you uh not knowing those things or tools or that ways of working will that will that stop you from not working no right so that's how it is so you just have to show that confidence that tool is just matter of uh some time you can brush up skills on any tool uh, it is just a tool not a programming language that will take a lot of time for you to learn or not Uh, a skill set uh, like a scrum master or a scrum framework or uh, some methodology which will take you years to learn and practice and all of that it's just a tool which with some uh, amount of uh, efforts and exploration you would be able to learn any tool so and these tools are just project management tools agile project management tools so you should be able to uh, learn that tools in couple of days so uh just uh, rejecting you basis tool is not at all the right way of evaluation uh, i feel so that is absolutely wrong expectation uh, so i have asked the interviewer also but he said like we expect something more like uh, for people experienced like you that's what he said so, but you have answered my uh, question sir thank you yeah so only thing is that you should have that uh, i mean you should answer them very confidently you should convince them confidently so in interview all that matters is uh, how can you sell your skills and how can you sell confidently that's all it matters okay thank you um uh, hi ramya this is momita this side and uh, can you hear me yeah. am i audible yes sir. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I am actually working um, as a scrum master for around nine years now. So I would just add, wish to like, I would like to add one point to uh, Raman's yes. question. Yes. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the only thing that I would like to add here is that Raman, uh, this Atlassian Zira is a freely downloadable tool. So you can download it anytime and you can uh, just add one test uh, uh, project there and you can add your like team members there. So you can get a feel of what exactly Zira does for you. So in case you need any help, you can reach out to me. Um, I mean, uh, for Zira is like it, it's easily downloadable and you can get all the feel from there if you uh, if you can work on any uh, couple of test projects, I would say so that that might help you. Nice. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Sure, sure. Raman, you got your go-to person for Jira. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, anytime, anytime. Thanks, uh, Momita, for adding that. Yeah, thank you, Ramya. Uh, Rishi, you had a question. Uh, you raised a hand, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ramya, one, uh, I have two questions. One, is Scrum's, uh, this certification is mandatory between to the scrum master role yes or no and uh, if if someone is already working in a like a scrum master kind of a role uh, and if he or she wants to progress in her career so doing certification is must or you can progress you can grow in your career you can switch your jobs uh, as a scrum master or scrum master certification is mandatory or not and uh, second question, like <clears throat> for every uh, role, there is a like a bracket of a higher slab as well as lower slab in the terms of pay packages. So uh, is there any like a higher slab or uh, uh, like for the scrum master in the industry, like beyond which you cannot uh, like you either you cannot uh, enter or, like beyond that or sure. they will not uh, accommodate you. Okay. Yeah. Sure, I'll, I'll answer those uh, one by one. So first thing is you asked about certifications, right? So certification are nothing but your entry point for getting uh, into some uh, role, right? So not only for Scrum Master, if you opt for a uh, change in a profile or uh, change uh, in your job, certification uh, is just a filtration criteria or entry criteria for you to uh, get into that role. So certification doesn't validate your knowledge at I mean, if you ask me, I won't say that certification is mandatory that without doing this, you cannot get a role uh, of a scrum master. No, that will just give you that entry path to get into it the way the graduation uh, certificate uh, gives you. Right. So graduation certification having uh, done B or graduation will not just validate or confirm that you will have that experience. Right. It just that you are qualified to apply for a job. Similarly, uh, certifications are just meant for that, which says that you're qualified to apply for that, that job. But these days, uh, certification has taken its own route. So people treat certification as like only way of and if you uh, do justice uh, in your interview certification, even if you do not do that should not be a matter, but it is advisable to have a certification. Uh, it actually helps you to get that uh, easy entry in the job. That's the only thing about certifications. And second thing you asked about is the uh, bracket, right? Uh, up to which level can we go into the scrum master? So there is no uh, kind of a level anything as such in a scrum master. Uh, like I know where you're coming from. You might be asking because a senior level scrum, a senior scrum master, junior scrum master and all of that. These are all the uh, uh, concepts that industry has uh, uh, built in just to suit up uh, to their uh, designations in their organization. So there is nothing called as a senior scrum master or junior scrum master. The roles and responsibilities of any scrum master uh, uh, is same. I mean, if, if they are working in the same uh, framework, so there would be some additional roles if you're working in, say, safe framework or maybe less framework, but more or less the essence remains the same. 
so there is no uh, level at which you can go even if you are like 15 years of experience and still you can be a scrum master or at 10 years uh, of experience also you can uh, work as a scrum master and after that what career path you choose is a different ball game all together whether you want to still be uh, within the technical range of a scrum master when i say technical within the framework technical for scrum master not for technology whether you want to be in this technical thing of a scrum master or you want to be an agile coach enterprise agile coach and all of that that again is a different uh, ball game all together but there is no level to this okay uh, so rapna uh, one like uh, is there something like higher uh, salary bracket like uh, beyond which they cannot go Or that like, really depends upon uh, the organization uh, that you are uh, getting into so there is no particular range i mean it would be very wrong uh, on my part to comment on the uh, 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 salary bracket because it depends uh, or it varies uh, from uh, Uh, organization to organization bases the factors so uh, parameters if i have to say first is your experience level uh, total experience relevant experience um, then knowledge and uh, nowadays people also uh, judge you based on number of team members that you are handling that also i mean it really matters what hr uh, has uh, guidelines in his or her mind so salary bracket is something is very uh, subject to come okay thank you i know we are uh, like 15 minutes uh, uh, we uh, past time but i know that uh, i i was prepared for this that th there is this discussion that will go uh, beyond the time because this is uh, really important and i also would like to add one more thing that we are trying to uh, kind of uh, cover uh, the sessions this way now we started with how to get that first job as a scrum master then we would uh, cover topics in continuation to this uh, like uh, how do you uh, once you land the job of a scrum master what next how do you approach and all of that so this would be kind of a series that we are planning to uh, cover but before doing that there is one session which many people have asked me regarding a release and project plan how to do a release and project plan maybe we would cover that topic and then move on to this uh, series of a scrum master's journey uh, uh, after that and uh, i would request everyone to uh, be uh, be in touch with acrt for uh, uh, getting knowledge of uh, So, scrum and agile uh, in your uh, scrum or uh, scrum master journey or agile coach journey and then uh, if you are uh, okay to stay then we can continue or if you guys are uh, getting late or want to uh, continue with your calls and other jobs uh, you are uh, free to uh, drop off uh, we do have to uh, hands raised i would like to address uh, their questions and then maybe we can uh, wind up this call if that if that is fine with everyone sounds like good plan yes uh, shrinivas you had a question right uh, please go ahead yes yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's a simple one question. Like that is, see, in uh, nowadays in the market, so so many uh, Scrum Master certifications we have it like a CSM, PSM one, PSM two, PSM three, and SSM, SASM kind of things, right? So which so Scrum Master certification adds more value and uh, gets our resume shortlisted for a Scrum Master interview? Uh, and which Scrum Master courses uh, to learn that help us to crack this Scrum Master job for sure? uh yeah shrinivas so i mean i i completely understand uh, i mean uh, what what the concern is like which certification to go ahead with i mean there are so many certifications uh, available now uh, to you know to to certify that okay i have the basic understanding of scrum and which which certification to go ahead and you know uh, get it done so to be see very frank i i guess ramya already covered it uh there are two two major certifications available one is you know uh, uh, the csm and the other one is a, a psm so uh, that are in from two different uh, uh, agile community community altogether 
but if you know if if you want to just uh, go with the certification thing that okay i just want to get that certification tag added to you know uh, my name and uh, then in that sense csm is easier to crack compared to the uh, the professional scrum certificate i mean uh, psm you know it it deep dives in, in too much into scrum and it it is not a very plain vanilla kind of a certification compared to csm csm is you know just uh, because even i have completed my csm and i know the difference of the csm certification and the psm certification so csm it just you know it's it's quite easy uh, it's like uh, attending those two days of training and then uh, it's uh, you can attend those, uh, that uh, uh, the question set and it's easily uh, easy for you know anyone to crack it but for psm you will need you know uh, 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 some amount of uh, 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 you know uh, in terms of preparing for it and then going ahead and giving the certification exam also psm it it is more from you know what i could you know get from friends in my circle it's like it it tries to uh, judge you based on the knowledge that you have gained not just the theory part but also how you could is, relate to the practical part as well so it it tries to judge you on that part so if you know if uh, if you uh, we are trying to figure out which one to go it's uh, all based on you know what what you are trying to get out of like whether you really want to understand scrum in and out then i would say go ahead with psm but if you just want to get your certification then go ahead with csm but again uh, there is no bifurcation on the industry level like people just look for certification be it a csm be it a psm again organizations have some preferences it's it, it's all organization to organization but then uh, there is, uh, if you no know, people don't judge you whether it's you are csm certified or whether you are psm certified Okay. All right. Okay. I I hope I answered your question. Uh, yeah, but uh, up to some extent. But the question, mm -hmm. the uh, the half the the next question is like, uh, see, you know, what courses that we need to learn to get to crack that uh, Scrum Master interviews because, uh, uh, right? Because uh, which course? It is not matter of certificate. Now I understood that. So CSM is pretty easy mm -hmm. compared to the other certificates, but. Mm -hmm. to crack that uh, interviews for any of the scrum masters so which courses that we need to attend it and uh, get the knowledge see, see that is what that is what all together you know the purpose of this session was like cracking an in interview for scrum master is one thing with my experience what i have understood uh, csm uh, i mean the scrum master interviews that i have attended those are all very subjective one thing is you know we need to put it uh, take it in you know with with uh, that like this is very subjective the person who is taking the interview it all depends on him or her what what that person is trying to get out of you whether you know that person is really looking at the scrum master aspect or whether you know that person is trying to judge you based on you know your previous experience your domain experience your technology experience and how your all this experience is going to fit into his current organization or current project uh, where the opportunity is uh, that is that is all together you know just to put it in simple single line it is very subjective you cannot expect people uh, it, it, there is no there is no a single template available where i would say okay this is this is what you need to prepare for and they, once you get you know you prepare it and that is the next day you go and give an interview you are going to crack it there is no there is no single te template for it it's like you, you just need to keep on preparing preparing and then uh, wherever your uh, you know uh, you you find a person who relates to you maybe you know that is where you you are going to crack that opportunity that is i would say Okay. Thanks. So I mean, we we I mean, this is also this also gives us an opportunity where we can you know have some kind of a session for uh, uh, how to crack an interview uh, for a scrum master opportunity. But yeah, again, maybe uh, just give us some time. We'll think about it. I mean, uh, whether we, we we need to go ahead and have this kind of a, a session as well for people who are you know really looking to crack an interview uh, with a scrum master opportunity so maybe we we can have some session around that as well correct thank you all right okay uh, all hey, right hey, hey. Uh, yeah, i sure. have a question i'm so sorry yeah. no no worries. yeah yeah so uh, one of in one of my interviews previous interviews so the interviewer was quite okay uh, with my interview but uh, the feedback that she got from her manager was uh, the exposure into the industry 
okay so she came back and suggested me why don't you try for a ba role and uh, then you maybe you can you know go for a scrum role in future uh, so is this the right way to go i mean it's it's not really you know uh, i would say it's not necessary to uh, to be to be very you know uh, 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 straight with it but then again uh, it depends you know whether you are not able to get an opportunity or you're not able to get through you know break through the scrum master opportunity maybe this 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 way might help you out you know uh, trying to crack a ba opportunity i mean through, trying to get into a ba role and then working in some scrum uh, scrum uh, setup uh, you know uh, a project where they have they are implementing scrum or they are working on scrum and then once you get into a, a ba role and then uh, since you are observing people around you you are trying to you know daily interact uh, interact with them uh you can you know then take up that opportunity next next uh, thing as well as a scrum master but then again uh, the suggestion that the you know the manager or the person gave you i don't i i don't think so that that is uh, you know uh, really re required to mm, okay yeah. thank you vivek uh, thanks aisha okay uh, any any other questions from anyone okay uh, then i think uh, ramya we i we are done for today today's session maybe you want to give some closing notes yes thanks we wait for that so uh, if no other questions then i think uh, we can uh, close the call for today so as we mentioned definitely we would try to cover that series and uh, we will evaluate on the topics definitely and uh, if uh, if that helps maximum people uh, the topic of interview uh, cracking the interview or uh, expectations on the interview then definitely we will come up with that topic as well and we would uh, be having that series having said that there would be one session on uh, project plan versus release plan and uh, uh, how to plan uh, for a project plan or a release plan and after that uh, maybe we can have this uh, continued series uh, in this scrum master journey and uh, thank you very much uh, everyone for your uh, time today and attending this session i hope this session was uh, useful to you guys to you guys and uh, this uh, video would be uploaded in the youtube youtube channel as well you can go back and uh, revisit uh, if you have any uh, doubts or if you have missed on any other part thank you everyone for jo uh, joining and have a wonderful weekend thank you thank, thank you, you so much ramya and for this thank you all thank you thank you everyone